Hi, it's Thursday at four o'clock and you're watching Chelsea and Tony live. This is a very special episode because it's the Halloween episode. So we're looking at your spooky pictures today. Let's say hi to Justin, who's making everything work. Hey, Justin. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Whoa, no smoking in the studio. You're crazy, Justin. <laughs> Let's also say hi to Chris out in Rochester. New Whoa, Chris got a new haircut. Whoa, is that Jared? <laughs> oh, okay. Jared's co-hosting this one today. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Today, our theme is spooky. But in two weeks, on November 14th, our theme is going to be animals. So we're taking one week off. And why don't you tell them about our sponsor, Squarespace? Sure. I don't talk like that, by the way. <laughs> Button. <laughs> Button. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Guys, you know the drill. If you want to try out your own portfolio, make your pictures look great, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. The link is down in the description below. Try it. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Squarespace. We have some news today. We're going to look at some pictures and then we'll leave. Oh, yeah, pretty much. But we have some news about, well, first of all, we have our new preset pack out. Um, and if you, you use fall 20 coupon, you'll get 20% off. Yeah, so head to stp.io slash preset3 for that and use the coupon code FALL20. Is that coupon code still valid? You might have to double check that, Justin. Yeah. This is the sort of amazing things that you can do with it. With just a couple of clicks, you can give your pictures a whole new look, including this. Whoa, that guy is cool. Yeah. You are so That's sexy, me. Tony. Thank you. <laughs> Um, dumb now, news. Yeah, I broke the news into two segments today, dumb news and real news. So let's start with the dumb news because it's like this personal pet peeve of mine how so many news articles are just completely baseless and that get will get repeated on so many outlets. And the first is, the story is the Samsung satellite was supposed to take pictures of space selfies and it fell from space and landed in this person's yard. That's interesting because when I saw the story, we looked at each other and we were like, this doesn't seem right at all. I don't know what you found out, but tell me. Um, Justin, you're kind of a space nerd. Does this seem like a satellite that crashed from orbit into the ground? <laughs> uh, I've seen better. I've seen better. <laughs> Yeah, it this is this is not a satellite. It's like a costume of a satellite. This is like some Halloween thing. And satellites usually don't have a long tether on them. Like that's not what keeps them in space. They don't tie them to something in space. Well, I think that that was a parachute, right? Um, well, I th my my theory, nobody actually covers what really happened, but the one thing I'm certain of is that this was not a satellite in orbit. <laughs> Because it definitely would have burned up on the way down. It's completely undamaged. They say that a, it like landed in a tree, and but it was they probably like tied it to a weather balloon and floated it up a little bit, and then it just gradually came down. But not you don't call that a satellite if something's floating. The other bit of dumb news we found is that Nikon publicly announced that you, they were no longer taking pre-orders for their very strange 58 millimeter F095. And they say it's because they were shocked by the demand. Do you think there's a huge demand for an $8,000 manual focus lens for a camera mount that hasn't proven to be super popular yet? Why would you it doesn't stop add taking pre-sales? I don't know. Yeah. They, yeah, they stopped taking pre-orders. You, you're right. You could just take pre-orders. You and could just take pre-orders, and then, I mean, we, we know they have no problem with making people wait for a product. Look at the D850. <laughs> so what's really going on here? I, I know. It doesn't add up, but everybody just kind of repeated this story. And, yeah, it, wait it, a minute. I don't believe it. You don't know what's happening about the satellite or the lens? <laughs> no, but I can tell that they're both not real stories. <laughs> Okay. I mean, my I would have to guess that there's probably some manufacturing problem or something, but they, it's like they don't provide information. Like we had over 400,000 pre-orders and we're not geared up for that sort of production just yet. It's, no, they don't provide any information. Now let's cover the actual real news. The first bit is What if probably, someone just actually ordered one? They were like, whoa, we just made a picture. Yeah, we, we just didn't had expect that one to prototype. sell one. <laughs> now we have to make it. <laughs> 
DJI has miniaturized their Mavic drone, and it's kind of important. Now, first, $400 is a really good price point. That seems to be the price point that everybody wants to buy a camera at, but it's tiny. It's about the size of a flash that you might pack into your bag. And I think by making it more and more portable, it's going to get to the point where a lot of photographers will throw them in their bag just in case, because I have traveled with my Mavic 2 Zoom quite a bit, and it's big, and it's heavy, and I definitely prefer not to travel with it. So there are times when I debate it, times when I bring it and I regret it because there's never a chance for me to fly it. If it's smaller and more portable, then I'll be more likely to bring it just in case. Uh, it has a, it claims a 30-minute battery life, but the Mavic battery life's never, ever deliver. Like it starts to, it turns around at about 30, with about 30% of the battery left usually. So maybe it can technically fly that long, but not in practice. It does not shoot 4K video, interestingly. It does 2.7K video at 30 frames per second. Um, I'm more likely to drop down to 60 frames per second, even if it's a lower resolution, because I like to slow down my video. The weight of it is 249 grams, which is interesting because the FAA requires you to register any drone over 250 grams, 250 grams or over. So they clearly targeted that particular weight, but it's about half a pound, which means it's lighter than just about any camera body without the lens. So if you think about that weight in your bag, it's like carrying an extra body, not even, and that's not that bad, right? That's manageable. Um, so we'll check it out and actually test it and see if it's actually useful and practical. <laughs> Note that while it doesn't have to be registered, you still have to follow FAA laws. Like you can't be flying around airports and stuff. Okay. What are you laughing at? I think I'm sexist because I can't take you seriously right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what does this woman know about the news? Who's this woman? You're like, what's your source on that? <laughs> A woman. <laughs> Kathy. The other bit of bad news, camera sales continue to slide. Canon sales are down 22%. That's like unit sales from the last year. And their profits are down 56%. I'm sorry, Canon revenue sales are down 22%. And their profits are down 57%. Even Sony sales are down. Sony has been able to pull through thanks to the fact that they're focused on mirrorless. But mirrorless sales overall are down this past quarter too. So mirrorless has been able to plow through the downturn, but now everything is turning down. I thought this quote from Canon was interesting. They said, oh, addressing their drop and how they're going to fix the problem. They said, we will work to encourage potential customers to purchase our products with a focus on digital marketing, partnering with professional photographers using social media. So Canon's kind of been the leader in like influencer marketing lately. And I know they've sponsored several really prominent YouTubers and that's encouraged a lot of people to like go out and buy Canon cameras just because their favorite YouTuber is using them. We're not one of those, but they have sponsored several people. And so I think we'll, what they're saying is we, they've had success with that, that technique's working and they're probably going to keep doing that. Um, my sources for those are canonrumors.com and sonyalpharumors.com as well as the original press releases. You want to take a look at some pictures? Sure. Okay. We had a lot of really good spooky pictures. So I haven't had a lot of time to look at Ooh, them. That's a definitely spooky. Yeah. Six seconds, a long exposure, and he held still a few times and walked around. It's like he's the ghost of himself. Yeah, that's a great concept. Good start. Um, Jim Setzer. Ooh, it's a close-up of a match. Oh, yeah. I was trying to make out what those figures were. That's it's kind of haunting and beautiful, right? Yeah. I don't know that I'd call it spooky, but it's beautiful. Nice shot, Jim. That's spooky. Who did this? Yeah, what is this? Is this like the catacombs in Paris or is this a movie set? I don't know. But someone said, let's make something out of human bones. And then a lot of people agreed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like the zombie cop. I, I, what I like about zombie this is cop. people will take their Halloween costumes and then get a little creative with it, actually add some mood and styling. And here, a green gel helped to sort of set the mood. Uh, maybe they didn't have a great background, so they let it all fall to black by overpowering the exposure with the flash, and it all worked out pretty well. Good shot, Paul. I think they're actually being lit from below. Yeah, uplighting is a common technique to make things seem scary. I don't know why or how that came about, but I know all old horror movies use that sort of uplighting. It's unnatural. Yeah, you're right. Um, oddly, this doesn't actually use uplighting. It's like off to camera right. Uh, 
but it's good. I think there's enough hidden in the details in the in the shadows that it comes across as pretty convincing. Nice shot, Gary. I don't. This is cool, but I have a hard time calling it spooky. Okay. I guess spiders are kind of automatically spooky, right? I don't yeah. find them spooky, but some people are like, oh, a spider is so scary. I think spiders are incredible creatures. Sp oh, yeah? Spooky, though. I listened to a whole podcast about how scientists study their silk. Uh -huh. And it's amazing. They spin different silks for different parts of the web and for different purposes. Yeah, I listened to that too. That spider guy knew a lot about spiders. Yeah, and they're it's incredibly strong. Like they can't figure out how to recreate it. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry guys. Jeff Bradley. So this is interesting. I wish there were a bit more of a story of it because it does look like just a picture of a um, Halloween decoration, but it is very spooky. Yeah, I think there's some potential here. My, I was really drawn to the shadows here because they're mm -hmm. so distinct. And so I thought this was going to be like hangman's noose or something significant. And then it just ended up being insignificant. So you might want to think about that. It is a prominent subject that doesn't support the overall theme. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> is this like a gorilla? This plane? is truly unsettling. Yeah. Um, I like the color contrast. Everything has a blue cast to it, except for that dead end yellow sign it has dead in it. So it seems extra scary. I'm going to give you a pick. This is so strange and scary. Um, Steve <laughs> Wallace. Okay. This is really creative. That's well done. I feel like Steve's um, wife was like, hey, Steve, what are you doing? And he was like, nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just putting, doing something spooky. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, you know, I, I was kind of studying the lighting, and the lighting does change between the two, and yeah, I guess it it works. Ideally, you'd want to actually move your head to that position so all the shadows and stuff lined up, and maybe Steve did that. What if we, like, make his head a different color so he looks kind of dead? Oh, you know, cool. what's bumping me is, Steve, you're shooting this at... Uh, 30 millimeters, so pretty wide angle. Your hands are going towards the camera, so you have forced perspective. That's making your hands appear bigger, but you cloned your head at the exact same size. Therefore, your, oh. your head is too small in your hands. It's That's shrunken head. Yeah, you need to accommodate for the forced perspective or maybe use a telephoto lens that compresses everything a little bit more. Good work. Do you like that I made his head dead? Uh, dead. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for being <laughs> honest. <laughs> Whatever. You you are me anyway. Okay, deformed by Sasha. Oh, this is creepy. Yeah, I like this. What you do? What's what happened here? I I'm gonna give this one a pick. Sure. It's unsettling and geometric mm -hmm. and I like everything about it. I don't know even what to say about it. This is like every woman at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this shot's excellent, right? I like the the processing. It's like dramatic and Oh, this is this man a musician? Okay. I like it. Good storytelling. You've got like smoke in the background. Her expression scared, his expression is very spooky and intense. Cool. Yeah, I gave it a pick. That's an awesome shot, Kenny. Oh my gosh, this is really, truly <laughs> scary, you guys. What the heck? Yeah. But also, what is happening? I have no idea. Is he putting her in that hole? Imagine if you were walking through and you saw this scene. How fast would you run? Um, the one suggestion I had... I have would be for a little more subject separation because like he's kind of getting lost against the dark background. And if you could just pivot to the left a little bit and put him against those lit uh, windows in the back, he'd pop a little bit more. His face though is like white against the background. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's tough. I'm just gratifying it a little bit. Wow. That's one of the scariest pictures I've ever seen. Congratulations. That's a little spooky, Edward. 
This is like mild spooky. This is like a kid's ghost story. Like, and then when I saw a figure in the shore, this is like, I'm truly scared. I need an adult. Yeah. But I like this because, Edward, you match the processing. The mood is kind of sad. And then you have all of these blues and the softness. And, and it all matches. Good job. That's not really spooky. That's just like shadow art. But okay. Yeah, that's a little spooky. I think that the processing could match. She's holding her phone. The phone definitely detracts from the overall spookiness. Here, let's, let's try to do some things. You know what, if, let's say you had a little kid in their bunk bed and then this was peering out from below the bunk bed, try to find some kind of story for this. Because it definitely comes across as like a snapshot of a teenager who's on Snapchat. Yeah, true. Mohammed, this isn't spooky. It was cool, but it was cool, but I moved on. I know he was like, My picture's cool. I'm gonna just pretend it's spooky. This Come probably felt spooky, but we need a focal point or something. We need a spook spooky. This is all right, you went to a very creepy place. This picture is spooky. What if you had like a shadow on the wall? Or like yeah. or like just a foot coming out from from that second doorway. That would make it spookier, Tony. Ooh, the hand. This is what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so that's like, that one detail. Yeah, like this was a little spooky. Then you see the hand and you're like, oh, heck no. Yeah, so take a look at your pictures and ask if there's something more you can add. What? I, I really like it when people kind of take miniatures and toys and do complex sets around them. I don't know what's happening, but it's pretty cool. It's spooky, yeah. Sorry for the mess. Oh my gosh, he's going to give him... Oh my god, he's going to... Oh. This is genuinely way too scary for me once again. Yeah, this is getting super realistic. Um, nonetheless, this the storytelling is really good, and it's straight up cinematic. So, I mean, I'm going to give you a pick. You did a great job with the picture. And it's definitely upsetting. Yeah, it's dark. Mission accomplished. But polite. Apparently a haunt. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wow. There is so much Where detail are you? here. Yeah. Georgia, attic scene, paranoia hunt. I wonder if they set up a haunted house in their attic for the kids of the neighborhood or something. It's incredibly would you, would you send your kids up into that guy's attic? Heck no. <laughs> oh, yeah. no well, maybe if she was talking back. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's creepy. Uh, and it's beautiful. Like I love the contrast of the blue and the orange. It's it's really nice. You know, it'd be cool if this was a long exposure and you had someone in like a ghostly co costume walking through. Yeah, I think that'd take this from like an awesome picture to a wow moment. Great suggestion. Oh, you put your hand as the tree. Oh, okay, that's okay. Unsettling. Oh, this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are those all hairy arm a... trees, Stephen? <laughs> Oh, this makes me want to vomit. Steven, I've never seen anything like Steven, that. Steven, why'd you so do that, you Steven? And Matt, it's not often that people get us with a picture where we're like, that is completely and totally unique. No, this Good should work. be illegal. Come on, Steven. I'm I'm in it now. Let's but make it black and white. <laughs> uh, yeah, he got me. Now I'm like, oh, man, why'd Steven do that to me? I like the idea of just sneaking weird body parts into regular Please pictures. Please don't tell them that. <laughs> I don't want to endure what I think I could possibly endure. Anshul Badia. Cool. Is this Maybe. actual light painting or was this done in post? It sure looks like light painting to me. This but I don't is know how they beautiful. Would have done that. I love the color yeah. contrast. I'm going to give you a, a yeah. pick. I don't want to change anything about this. Me either. And look at even this little curve kind of frames them. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. up against the dark. They made this a long exposure so it's just light behind them without being like, wow. Yeah, good. perfectly done. Very creative. I hate when I walk into spider webs, but this is a little spooky. It's a little bit spooky. This is a fantastic wow. costume. A great environment, good expression. This reminds me of, um, what's that movie with Charlize Theron? 
Forget it, guys. That was such a having a senior moment. <laughs> you disappointed Justin. Charles. Mad Max. Oh, oh yeah. Mad Max. Good shot. Yeah, it was a Mad Max theme. I. So it it's definitely a spooky costume, but I feel like I need to see a little bit more of the face, right? Because it's just so dark. That's um, also kind of just losing all the color. That is that is a very creepy costume. Um, I kind of want to lose the like graphic T-shirt too. How about yeah? Wow, that's a tough one. It needs a little processing to match the mood, but I like how you put the uh, thing over your head, and it's a cool mask. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we got some light painting plus the costume. It's an hey. interesting way to kind of accentuate it. Remember Chris Reddy? Chris, do you have any questions or comments for Tony and me? Hello there. Yeah, we do have a few. Uh, first off, oh, this thing keeps jumping around here. There we go. And do you have any record? Well, <laughs> Andres, Andres, he wants to know, do you have any recommendations for taking uh, pictures of his wife while she's in labor and her son is being born? born. I don't know that that's recommended, but it's spooky. <laughs> I, I actually, I've never done that before. I mean, if that's something that she wants you to do, I would just look it up because I have no experience with that. Um. You could use a technique called mirroring. Like if she needs to give you a three quarters, you could actually like turn your face and be like, tilt like this, chin up a little bit, Tony's smile, gonna... smile. This, is this your tutorial on how to get punched? <laughs> yeah. Tell her, to, tell her to smile a lot. Why aren't you smiling? You're so pretty when you smile. What else, Chris? Also, what does the addition of grain do to the look and feel of a photo? And when should you or shouldn't you add grain? Hmm. I, I think it can be do, used for different reasons. Um, often I don't have to add it because if there's low light grain will just, or noise will naturally occur. But when I add it, it's usually because I want it to have a very, um, I want to say like an organic feel like that film found this picture in my under my parents' bed in a shoebox feel, and it can make it feel really classic and timeless if that's what you're going for. So sometimes with black and white, if a photo looks very classic to me, I'll add a little extra grain yeah. in. I can quickly demonstrate grain. In Lightroom, they have a slider here for grain, so you can just slide it up, and it's it's not digital noise. It's different. Uh, it simulates a film grain, so you can adjust both the amount of grain and the size of the grain and kind of the roughness of it. So like this is kind of very serious grain. And so this gives you some sense for like the difference. Oh, I didn't mean to hit C, I meant to hit Y. Uh, okay, I gotta go back to the development module. Okay, just to give you a sense for kind of how it changes the feel adding the grain. Um, yeah, it makes it feel more casual, less perfect. And I have used grain before to make something seem a little less deliberate. And you don't have to add that much either. Even if you yeah. just add a little bit, it can do a different feel. By the way, great shot, Aaron. Not yeah. for nothing, but just throwing it out there. In terms of film, do you know what actually causes the grain? No. What is it's it? It's the silver. Oh, really? Bigger, big, bigger pieces of silver to be more sensitive to light. Oh. And that's what you're seeing is the actual chunks of silver because they have to be so big to be so, so sensitive. I did not know that. Thank you, yeah. Chris. Dang. Do you have any more questions or comments? Yeah, one more question. Tony, Do you, have you seen this picture of um, the NASA uh, star trails from the International Space Station? <laughs> have you seen that, Charles? No, that is so weird. So the picture? Yeah, no, yeah, no I, the, I just the seen effect that. is very cool. There, there's several different ways that they've done it, but it, it, it's definitely from the ISS, and they, uh, they've got some uh, a whole series of them out there, and they're they're kind of cool looking. That is cool. Yeah, I need wow. to check it out. NASA has some of the most amazing photography in the solar system. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Yeah, crazy. Um, we'll take a look at a couple more pictures and do a re-import. 
I love this picture. Yeah, I really did too. It caught my eye even as a thumbnail, and I don't think I'd want to change anything about it. It's so truly it creepy. I want to peek in the shadows to see if you can see the face at all. Oh my gosh, it's just a sweet little girl not even trying to be creepy. <laughs> oh. That's funny. A little bit of processing can That's do wonders, crazy. right? That's crazy. That's very cool. Good job. Pick. I'm going to flip through the thumbnails real quick. Any of these spooky pictures? Oh my gosh. Eye? <gasps> the spider eye? <laughs> spider eye, but also the woman eating the pigeon. Let's go. Let's go okay. and we will never recover from this. Wow. Oh, man. Okay. You get a pick. That's one of the creepiest pictures I've ever seen. What? Man. Why'd you do this? Oh my gosh. No. And this... It it hurts me. It makes me want to just, oh, it makes me want to grab my eyes and like oh, clean them. This is Kareem as well. Okay, wow. Kareem you have a style. Multiple pictures, but it's upsetting. okay. It's upsetting. We'll allow it this time. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, this is that same sort of light painting technique. I I wonder how they're doing this. I don't think it's like maybe their mask is actually lit up. Oh yeah, like they've got some L wire. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Or is it just fluorescent? Uh, fluorescent lighting. Yeah. Or not fluorescent. Uh, uh, black light? Glow in the dark lighting. Oh, yeah. Could be. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. I wonder about that technique. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us more. Ooh. This one's cool. Yeah. I'd like to see the processing match a little bit. Um, I think that with something like a little grain or something, you could maybe add to the mood. Maybe take down the vibrance a little bit. We don't want to do a Y. Here, let's press Y so we don't see that. You could go in and add a little grain. Like we were talking about. We learned about grain today together. That was exciting. <laughs> okay. This one is very upsetting as well. Yeah, but it's not spider crawling out of the eyes upsetting. Mm -mm. No, some people really know how to get to the heart of our fears. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people hate clowns. I think they're fine. Um, it's got that same mask again. Sorry, your picture is very low res. Okay, I'll look at this one picture and then re-import. That's very creepy. Yeah, you do this sometimes. Anytime we're in a like a hotel room with frosted glass, you like to do some sort of pose with it because it is a cool effect. It's just very creepy. This one is cool too. I like all the hands. <laughs> yeah, very cool shot. That's a very cool shot. Okay, I'm going to re-import. Maybe you have another question from Chris while I do Yeah, that. Chris. A question for you, Chris. Who yes, makes a better Chelsea, me or fake Chelsea? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not It's not close. <laughs> a better Chelsea. <laughs> do you have any other um, questions or comments for us? <laughs> yes. Um, have you ever thought about having um, making it available for uh, audience members on the live show to be able to comment or include comments with their photos, whether it be in the metadata or, you know, explain maybe something that needs some explanation other than what just what's in the metadata on the information. Um, that's actually a good idea. I'd never considered that. I always thought people put it in the metadata. Another thing people could do is actually put it into Photoshop and add text to the bottom of the photo. Yep. If they wanted to, that would make it easy for us so we don't have to go hunting for it. So if people wanted to do that, we'd yep. be fine with that. It does show us the file name, though, so that's the easiest thing. I think that's easy. We don't want to see a whole name. paragraph anyway. No, not a whole paragraph, but a <laughs> sentence, maybe just explaining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're fine idea. with that. What else? Yep. Uh, let's see. Do you have any... Let's see. Was uh, last news last month that Sigma's stopping production on lenses for Pentax... Have you heard anything more about that? Should Pentax be con or Pentax users be concerned about it? Both of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I think Pentax is mostly a dead mount. I wouldn't be surprised if they release another body, um, but you, we just haven't seen any big announcements from them in yeah. a long time. Yeah, and the last few things they did were really minor, and they, you know, launched Tamron and lenses as Pentax branded lenses. Like they're not putting any R and D into it, so. If your gear works, keep using it. But otherwise, I don't. If you're hoping to get new gear from them, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, it's too bad. To look elsewhere. A lot of history there. Let's take a look at a few more pictures. I like this one a lot. 
That's very interesting. I like the balance, the composition of the photo, her blank expression. It's cool. I'd give it a pick. Yeah, though, I mean, is it like a shot and then it's superimposed from a green screen? Like, why does she have these like green shadows on her arms? Is it the mist from the background? Oh, I don't know. Because there's this stuff on the floor. Is it actually smoke? It almost looks like a riot or like mosh pit or something. Yeah. Right? I think it might actually be real smoke because you can see here it's very dense blue smoke. Mm. This is Dia de los Muertos, so I don't know, but they're just, I can't tell much Ooh. from the picture. It's okay to ask Oops. questions, though. It's okay to ask questions. That's a big takeaway for tonight's show. Got some fiber optic light painting that turned out really cool. I don't think I've tried painting with fiber optics. Okay, Stuart. Very interesting. Ooh, that's kind of a rude thing to do to your cat. <laughs> Confront it's, your cat with its own mortality? It's like a still life and a portrait combined. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I like the spooky cookie. <laughs> I like the spooky oh, avocado. So oh, all right. Here, let's go to the library. And we'll pick some of our favorites. People really hate clowns. Oh my gosh, this one's very unsettling. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one a pick. It's it's really haunting. It's simple. Um. Yeah, very cool. What about forty three? Oh, about, of course, the dog gets it. This isn't spooky at all. <laughs> this is just cute, you guys. It's dressed up like a Christmas reindeer. <gasps> this is spooky. Yeah, Katie's creepy, all right. Nice shot. Okay. Oh, look at what they did with the shadows here. Oh, okay. That's really nice awesome. storytelling. Yeah, really good work. I'm going to give that one a pick. This might actually be... Yeah, this is a good candidate for your new Lightroom presets available at sdp.io slash preset3. Tony, thank you. You really know how to plug your boo. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to beat Chelsea today. I'm channeling my inner infomercial. <laughs> um, did they make it look like a person's walking into a pumpkin? That's really interesting. That's a cool idea. You did something different, and I appreciate that. Yeah, very cool. Um, let's see. I like pictures with storytelling. This isn't really that spooky, but it is interesting. This one's spooky. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. And and they sort of use that film grain look to make it feel like, I don't know, you, you found a Polaroid in a back alley or something like that. I think with scary, leaving more to the imagination is scarier. And have you ever noticed sometimes they don't even ever even really show the monster in a scary movie? I think if you start to see the seams of the costume, it's no longer scary. Um, and so putting things in deep shadows and obstructing with grain can make your picture scarier. I've seen that with some of these where there's just a little bit too much detail. You can really see what's going on like this. Like you can very clearly see is a mannequin and you can kind of see the seams of her makeup and stuff. So like, use shadows and darkness and make people question what's in the shadows. Yeah. Same thing with this. Really good suggestion. You know, you can see like his real nose poking out, but I can see you didn't really get a chance to pose them, but putting them in shadows and different lighting and they would, it would help out the creepiness. Yeah. And the totally chill girl behind them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, wait, was this taken with an iPhone? No, there's this thing that kids are doing. I am so impressed with kids and what they do with their phones now they use the panorama and they'll pose in one part of the panorama and then move so in the next part they're doing something different they're coming out with their own little photography techniques it's so cool uh, and I, and you can do this effect with your iphone where you have yourself in the mirror making a different expression so i thought that was going on but i was wrong you're gonna re-import yeah i'll re-import once more Let's chris see. again one what more what you time. got for me Yes, yeah, Steve Berman, and I, I, I echo his thoughts. He wanted to give uh, Chelsea, well, the real Chelsea, I don't know what, some Chelsea, 
some kudos on the challenge from Matt Granger. Great job. Oh, I didn't see the video yet. I didn't know that it was yeah. out. Thank you so much. That was really good. I'll have to go check that out. I don't know if you know Justin, but Matt Granger did a little challenge video where he took a few photographers and gave them one very difficult to edit photo. No, I was not aware of that. And my only goal was to beat Manny. <laughs> That's just my only goal in life, really. Was, yeah, was it a competition? No, it wasn't a competition. <laughs> but you wanted to make sure you won. Yeah, no, I wasn't competing <laughs> against anyone else. I just wanted to tell Manny I was beating him. You were not competing against anyone else, but your only goal was to beat Manny. Yeah, no, because there were other people involved, and I don't even know. Whatever, they're probably, they probably actually won in this non-competition, but I just wanted Manny to know I beat him. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll make sure that Manny knows. Okay. <laughs> but it was a, it was a three minute challenge, and I noticed you timed yourself and did it real time, whereas most of the other photographers did a voiceover and sped up the video of them editing the picture. So way to go! Oh, so you won by default because <laughs> everybody else cheated and is thus disqualified. That's right. No, it wasn't a competition. You were allowed to do whatever you wanted. I just was being as quick as possible. And probably at my expense. I haven't seen other, the other people's photos yet. I just, I haven't seen the other photos, but I know I beat Manny. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I, I'm just joking. I love teasing Manny. So. Here's Dan's mother taking with a super wide angle 15 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, like using forced perspective to sort of exaggerate the features and then some processing to, you know, accentuate the lines in the face and stuff. Um, whoa, got intense when I zoomed in. Yeah, that's that's actually spooky with that wide angle. And was she in on that, making that spooky face? Or is that like when you don't take seconds, like my grandma or something? I like the 8 by 10 perspective on that better. Oh, oh, that's spooky. Oh, pixel scared. Okay, don't worry, we're safe. The guard dog is at it. Safe again. Um, this picture is so effective at being creepy. Normally I'd be adjusting the crop and trying to use the rule of thirds, like get the eyes in the top third of the frame, but the imbalance of the photo really supports the overall story here. Uh, this is fantastic. I, I really like it. I'm giving it a pick. Do you have any suggestions? I don't know. It just feels so perfect. To I me. like it. Yeah. Good job, Christopher. Oh, that's pretty Ooh. eerie, too. So they used a long exposure to take a portrait so that you could see through the hands. And I have a tutorial on this called, like, Taking Creepy Pictures. Uh, you can see that on our YouTube. I took creepy pictures of Tony. And our daughter is calling us from upstairs. I don't know if you can hear her. <laughs> I think you're going to text her and tell her we're recording. Yeah, I was about to text her that. Um Let's see what else we have here. I like how in this one you made the subject moving so you could see through them and that makes it a little bit creepier. You definitely were thinking about the mood of the picture by putting it in sepia uh, and making things kind of dark and moody. So I appreciate that. Um, this isn't really like spooky. It's kind of just like a Halloween sexy. Um, but I, I like the pose i like the eye contact a lot of that is good hold on we're gonna say hi to maddie hi maddie i told her to come down and take a look at this i think we got through all the pictures i could try re-importing again w what do you think mad which of us is more convincing at being the other person my mom yeah i won <laughs> once again winning all the non-competitions <laughs> Bye, love Bye. you. <laughs> okay, we saw that picture. Okay. I think this could have been very spooky if that were a real hand. Oh, yeah, I know. It came across as a little plasticky, but maybe you could add some texture to it. Um, This is a great picture of her costume, right? Yeah. Like, I really like the orange light in the background, and the lighting is very pretty. I wouldn't call it spooky but it's a nice portrait it's not not spooky this one's pretty spooky yeah that's really nice i like the veil in the foreground and i'm curious about the catch light in the eyes i don't know that i can zoom in oh, oh it's I a skull like a, oh i thought it was a moth or something i guess you see what spookifies you <laughs> <laughs> well it, it is it real i don't that's know that satellite fell out of yeah maybe it's real. 
Okay. okay we did, we we did it. All the pictures somehow. That doesn't often happen. But no, we don't have a very spooky Fun category this group week. of viewers today. Chris, do you have any last questions or comments before we go? There was one question here. Your presets, do they work only on Lightroom or Lightroom and Photoshop? They're or only else? they're only Lightroom presets. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah, but both Lightroom Classic and regular Lightroom. Check them out, stp.io slash preset3, and we will see you in two weeks on the 14th, where our theme is animals. That'll be a popular one, so get your picture in soon. Okay. Thanks, guys. And thank you, Squarespace, for making this show possible. If you want to check it out and get your own Squarespace website, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off, and we have that in the link below. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Justin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks, Jared. See you in two weeks. You bet. <laughs> Bye. Whew. That is all. That was a distracted show. We got the dog scratching. Madeline stopped by.